Welcome to this week's Finest in Five, where we deep dive into the current events shaping Australia's real estate market. In today's episode, we're going to go through the current stats on first home buyers. There's more first home buyers than ever. Does it price you out of your dream? You'll find out. And we'll go through 11 freaky houses. There's some interesting ones there. Let's dive right in. All right, guys, so starting from the top, the changing perspective on first home buyer numbers. Now, interestingly, there's been 150 increase in the home value index over the past two decades. This is specifically looking at first home buyers. Simon, what is going on here? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, Elisa Owen from CoreLogic just recently published a bit of research around first home buyers and some you know, finance data about what's happening with first home buyer finance and, and in the market in general. And there's some pretty interesting figures here. So there's been a $4.9 billion increase in first home buyer finance uh, over the past 12 months and I oh know that was just in February itself um, in the past 12 months their value of first home buyer lending has risen by 20.7 percent and that's four times the amount of non first home buyer owner occupied lending so there's a lot more growth in people who are first home buyers getting finance but the question is is this really a sign of a healthy market or is there sort of something underlying here that is sort of not telling the full story? Yeah, and it looks like with all these price increases over the sort of time frame they've looked over the last, um, I think it was 20 years, that you know, there's been 150% increase in prices, but only 82% increase in, in wage price index over the same period. So property prices have gone up, but wages haven't quite kept up the same way. And uh, it's interesting to see over the last, you know, sort of over since 2006, the proportion of owner-occupied finance that was first home buyers. It's there's been sort of some peaks in trust in there. There was a particularly large peak in 2009 when they doubled the first homeowners grant. It, it went up to 21,000 in some states on existing properties, and then a bit of a dip from 2014 to 16. And then since the home guarantee scheme introduction a couple of years ago, we've seen that increase from uh, the proportion of first home buyers, which was about 25% longer term. It's it's almost 30% of the buyers in the market now. So we're seeing some of these government schemes, it's you know, it's not getting easier, that's for sure, but these schemes have helped a lot of people get their foot on the ladder and, and get into that first home buyer market. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the other takeaways here is that uh, the first home buyer lending is definitely going up, which is, you know, it's good to see people are out there being able to go and buy a home. The growth may not be completely due to more first home buyers getting a home though. So if people are looking for their second home or if they're downgrading, uh, it's entirely possible that they're taking out smaller loans or not even taking out a loan at all. So some of these figures, when you look at them uh, sort of superficially, they, they look like they're saying one thing, but if you can dive in a bit deeper, it's possible that you know there isn't as big of a shift in terms of the actual behavior of the market, at least as far as first home buyers are concerned. So with housing affordability, the cost of living, a pretty big topic this year, and I think it'll continue to be into next year. CoreLogic's housing affordability report's been released and it's showing a potential, yeah, can I say it, rental market squeeze. So rent is now eating up more income. So the national median rent to income ratio is a record high of 32.2%, meaning renters are spending almost a third of their income on rent. It's particularly brutal for, for sort of the lower income earners um, with the 25th percentile spending a whopping 54.3% of their income on rent. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we did have a recent minimum wage increase as well. But in terms of impact, I mean, that all just pretty much went to rent. So the wage increase, but then the rent hikes went up. So wasn't really a lot of relief there for the sort of lower income renters. So it's a bit of a difficult situation because if you are trying to buy a house, um, you know, the more you spend on rent, the less you can afford to save for a deposit. And so CoreLogic is now estimating that it'll take over 10 years for somebody on the median income to save a 20% deposit for a house. So an entire decade just to save your deposit. And this is where I think they're gonna to have to do some more work. Like the home guarantee scheme has been amazing. You can get in the market with a 5% deposit. In New South Wales, they've tweaked some of the stamp duty concessions, but some of the other states just haven't caught up with that. Like in Queensland, the stamp duty concession, stamp duty is only waived on homes up to $500,000. And you don't have to look far and we'll cover this later in the episode. There are units for under $500,000 in Brisbane, but you're not getting a house for under that. So I think the state governments need to do some work to potentially look at some stamp duty reprieve for first home buyers. 
to try and make it a little bit easier. And even with the government home guarantee scheme with some of the price caps in Brisbane at 700, Sydney it's 900, uh, Melbourne's in between. So they might need to do some work on there just to understand, well, the market's moved since these schemes have been established. We might need to move some of these caps too. So I guess that the takeaway here from this one is that if you are feeling like it's tough to save a deposit in the current market, um, you know, you're not alone. I think a lot of people out there are struggling. The thing to consider here is like, what sort of, it is it can be difficult, but what are some creative solutions that you can do to overcome the, the hurdle of saving a deposit? So, you know, um, if you are renting at the moment, you could always consider, and if you have the opportunity, like sharing a house with more people or even some people move back in with their parents for a little while to save up the deposit. I mean, these aren't the most ideal solutions, but sometimes you need to think outside of the box in terms of ways that you can still move ahead with your plans to buy a house. And keep in mind too, that you don't need 20%. With these government schemes, the minimum is 5%. As we've covered on other episodes, your first home doesn't need to be your forever home. So it could mean that you're gonna be living in a unit further out for the first couple of years. To get that home under your belt means you're gonna get out of the rental market at least and put you know, your own roof over your head, but that can be an upgrade. And like Simon said, for some of the stats, with a lot of upgraders now, their home equity's grown and it means their second home's easy to get into. Uh, next up, 20 years of poor property growth. Is the property party over? Uh, this was a funny article, Simon, because it was a bit of a boohoo for investors. You know, they were, they were complaining and saying that, you know, all the good times over. Over the past two decades, medium house growth has been 5.3% which is lower than the preceding 20 year period, 1983 to 2003, where the median house price growth was 8.7%. So they're complaining that then they got 5.3% compared to 8.7%. I mean, cry me a river people, like this is, this is not fair. I mean, this, is a, this article is written for property investors, but it just strikes me as pretty much out of touch with the, you know, the average Australian first home buyer. They're like, oh no, we can't make such a, a good return on our investment. In the meantime, property prices are the higher they've ever been. And it's really hard to actually get into the market at all. So I just thought this was an interesting take to see like, well, what's it like on the other side of the fence? Some people are, are um, complaining about getting poor returns. And there's a few reasons why it's harder to get in. So borrowing capacity is another thing that has changed. So 20 years ago, the amount that you could borrow based on your income was a lot higher. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of changes in terms of how the lenders assess borrowing capacity and they have stronger rules about your income and income hasn't matched the same rate as the property growth either. You just think, well, maybe they should consider what it's like for the for the people who are looking to take that first step on the ladder and you know give us a, I don't know, a bit of empathy perhaps i don't know it's not that these guys are wrong it just feels like they're not really in touch with the entire housing market if you're an investor this probably feels true to you but uh you know the first home buyers they're certainly dealing with some different challenges Absolutely. So which brings us to our next point, the suburbs where you can buy a unit for under $400,000. This has been an interesting one. Even from uh, our YouTube channel, there's been comments on there where people are like, what are you getting? Like a, a cardboard shed. Uh, it's just impossible. Yeah, you're not going to get in the premium locations, but there's definitely places around you know, Melbourne and Perth and even Darwin, uh, where you can buy you know, units for under $400,000 in cities. And, and again, it can be that stepping stone um, with affordability. So Simon, let's let's dive through some of these. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there are places in every capital city where you can buy a unit for under the $400,000 figure or even around the $400,000 figure. So, you know, you can like, let's just look at a couple of cities. So for example, in Brisbane, you can get an apartment in Woodridge for where a median price of $310,000. So that's like very approachable. And places in Beanley, Waterford West, Slacks Creek and Ipswich, they're sitting around that sort of 380 to $400,000 mark as well. So these might not be the fanciest units or in the best locations, but they are that crucial first step in terms of getting access to, to being on the property ladder. And same in Sydney, you can look around Wally Park, Fairfield, Blacktown, Cabramatta, are for under 435,000. You know, in Melbourne, there's uh, Flemington, Travancore, Melton West, Harkness, um, for around 370. 
So th there are definitely options there. They're going to be one bedroom. You need to check out the square meterage. I had a client um, that was buying in South Yarra. Uh, she found a unit for 350000 uh, The only tricky part was the internal square meter was, was under 50 square meters. So there are some banks that do have uh, restrictions on this. Some banks will actually count the, the balcony and also the car space in the square meterage, but just keep that in mind um, with some of those cheaper units in, in probably the nicer areas, there could be some restrictions um, or, or different things that banks are looking for. Certainly the ones in sort of Beanley and, and some of the ones we'd had a look at as a part of this, uh, you know, they were over 50 square meters. They, they sort of meet the, the requirements, just it's a little bit further out from town. So you're getting it for, for a bit of a cheaper price than you know, if you're buying something in, in the central CBD. Yeah. And, you know, if, you, if you're not attached to living in, like, say, if you're living in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and you're not attached to living in there, like explore some of the other places in Australia. So uh, Darwin, for example, uh, more than half of all unit sales in March were priced under $400,000. So there is a lot of options in, in some places if you're willing to consider geography and, and where you might want to live and you know, it could be a good experience as well off the bat. I think the key thing here at this article is, look, units and houses, everyone ideally, most people want to start off by buying the forever house, the house with the backyard, which we always talk about. But starting off with the unit, I mean, it's a great stepping stone. Um, as we covered last week, the unit prices are actually growing faster in across Australia than house prices at the moment. So there is more of a shift of people looking at units as a really viable option and, and it's worth looking at. And the other good news here is if you are willing to sort of take a glance and give some of these other locations a bit of a chance, you can get into the market pretty cheaply, which I think is encouraging. That's amazing. And then wrapping it up, uh, you've got 11 wild real estate listing photos from around the world. Probably not going to work well on a podcast, but let's try and we'll include the link below. Um, but yeah, kick us off, Simon. This, this first one from Adelaide is pretty freaky. So there's, I had to share this because it's just um, it's just some wonderful wild ways uh, that you can you can find on these real estate listings. So there's this house in Adelaide. Uh, you look on one of these pictures. There's a there's a doorway and there's a creepy old door and there's just a like a small child holding a teddy bear. Like looks like it's straight out of a horror film. And it, it turns out that's just a sticker on a sliding door. But at first glance, you'd be thinking, am I buying a haunted house? Is that's why it's so cheap? Then there's some other weird ones. There's like a house in Virginia that's a farm. That's like those old style big open gallon with a you know mezzanine floor upstairs. But in the, the main dining area, there's a full one-to-one -one picture, like a you know a model of a horse, like a stuffed horse that's part of the dining room that's you know in there. That's just so creepy to have a, you know, be eating dinner next to a real life horse that's been stuffed and staring back at you. <laughs> I think my absolute favorite from this is um, this property in Victoria. And I think it has to be the most creative way to sell an empty block of land that I've seen. So the pictures show you this wonderful, it's like a Star Wars spaceship looking kind of house. And you know, from afar, it's like, wow, lovely house. And then you click on the pictures and what they really have are just artists' renderings of what this house could look like. So with plans, permits and entering completed, all the hard work is done and you can take over and begin construction to buy this Star Wars spaceship house. So really you're getting a block of land, a couple of permits and some plans. I, I just think it's kind of uh, genius. Amazing. So we'll include the link below. All right, Simon. So wrapping it up, it's looking harder, but it's not all bad news for first home buyers. Yeah, look, we had a bit of a whirlwind too there of the property market. You know, there's... They're the keys, first couple of articles we talked about, the market is tough. There is no sugar coating as such. Price increases, wages aren't keeping up. I mean, these aren't just numbers on a page. That's your savings being stretched further and needing bigger loans just to get in the game. But it's not hopeless. Uh, you know, even in the pricey cities, there are still pockets with affordable units and, you know, rentals are tight, but you can also look at shifting to buying a smaller unit place and paying off your mortgage instead of paying off someone else's. And I think we're, what we finished off here with these other listings is that, you know, the perfect house doesn't exist. You know, some people might want a spaceship out in the middle of Victoria. Someone else might want a, a creepy uh, kid sticker on the, the doorway of their house. If you're finding the perfect house is a mirage, finding a place that is 
ticks off most of your boxes and is a place that you can see yourself living in for the next three to five years, I think is what really we should be looking for. That's it for today, guys. If you liked the episode, uh, make sure you leave a review. And if you need any help with finance, hit us up at huntsgalloway.com.au. Until next time, see you later.